to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Today, I will tell you about the type of, of pilots you will fly with, at least based on my experience. I once did an interview and this company's process involved any potential new hire meeting and conversating with the flight attendants. During the interview process, one of the flight attendants said to me, I don't sound nor do I come off as a pilot. I was unsure whether this was a compliment or whether she was indicating a part of my character that needed improvement. She went on to say, it is a compliment since in her experience, most pilots were narcissistic. Most pilots thought the world resolved around them. And most pilots thought they could get nothing wrong. Her characterization of pilots was correct. However, I would add, not all pilots are this way. Some of the best pilots I have had the privilege of, sh of, of sharing the flight deck with were confident, they were knowledgeable, and they were eager to pass on their knowledge to someone like myself who was new and up and coming. They were also really, really good at communicating. They would let you know what is it you need to know and also discourage you from learning the things that would bring danger or hamper your career development. They were also extraordinary individuals when it comes to hanging out outside of the flight station. The second type of pilot I have flown with are pilots who I call extremely negative. For these individuals, the sky is always falling, the sky is always gray, the company is an awful place to work, they are consistently miserable. The issue with flying with such an individual with such a negative attitude is performance. Their negativity tends to transform onto you. And that transference interferes with your ability to perform your job properly. It is extremely difficult to function in an environment where negativity has taken a foothold. Such individuals are difficult to judge outside of the fly deck. Some of them may be really good to hang out with away from the aircraft and some of them may continue with this misery even when they are not at the aircraft. In my entire career, there is only one individual who I asked not to be paired with again, and this is because of his negativity. The third type of pilot you are sure to encounter in your career is someone with two personalities. In the fly deck, you can't stand them because they are rude. They don't know how to communicate. You just want to run from them. You can't wait for your trip to be over. But outside of the fly deck, they are a joy to hang out with. They speak clearly. They know what is it they want they can sit down and hold a really, really good conversation. But the moment they get into the fly deck, they become what I call dicks, mean, totally someone you don't want to be around. The other type of pilot you will fly with, at least based on, on, on my experience, is someone who lack confidence in their ability to execute the job. Such, such a pilot don't have the knowledge that they think they need. Some of them don't know the job as well as they do. And it's really easy to identify such a pilot. They usually question themselves over and over. For instance, 
there was one pilot I flew with who had to call the chief pilot, had to call the owner of the company to verify that his calculation, his performance for the aircraft for a long, for a long country trip was correct. This was the captain. Such individuals also tend to go back on their decisions. They tend to question, did I make the right decision? Did I do every single thing I could have done? Now, don't misunderstand me. We all do that. However, these individuals who don't have confidence in themselves do it excessively. I, for instance, would make a determination within an hour or less whether or not I can execute something that, the, that a passenger asks. Because for me, the determining factor is safety. For an individual who lacks confidence, three days later, they're still questioning whether or not they made the right choice. That's not the type of person you want to share the fly deck with. They, he or she, are unsure as to their ability to execute. The real danger here is, because they don't know what they're doing, they tend to pass that on to you by trying to tell you what to do, how you should do it, and that frustrates you. I have experienced that. The worst thing that any one pilot can say it to another is try to tell that pilot how to fly the plane. Now, as a new pilot, you will have questions. You will be at a disadvantage. Thus, you want to be open-minded to learn. But at some stage during your career, you would have been, you would be so confident in your ability that it would be an insult for another pilot to tell you what is it you should be doing and how you should fly the plane. Simple things such as power setting, pitch, turn, flares. When you get at my stage in your career, you don't want anyone to be telling you that because you know how to do it. Which brings me to a point that's very important. Every pilot I've ever flown with makes the same mistake. They seem to think that their way is the only way to do it and it's the right way to do it. This is not the case. Flying a plane is the same. The difference is technique. And that technique is what makes you comfortable. Find your comfort zone find your technique and develop it and use it throughout your career and don't try to let anyone change it except if the advice that they're giving you involves a safety issue if if for example you are flaring too high then that's a safety issue if for example you are unable to properly maintain your speed that's a safety issue, then you should listen to the more experienced captain or the most experienced person that you're flying with. All right, that's it for this video. As always, I hope it was helpful and informative. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything I've said, please leave them in the comment below and I will, I will respond to them personally. Until next time, be good.